What's up everyone? Jimmy from MTB Travel Review here and welcome back to another episode of Stupid Simple Bike Chat. On this episode, we're gonna talk about a little spring tune-up. Spring cleaning. Everything that you need to get your bike ready for the spring season, specifically your mountain bike. So typically what happens for most of us is we ride hard all year and put our bike away soaking wet and filthy. Then we leave it in the garage or the basement all winter long and in the springtime pull it out and expect it to be ready to roll. But it turns out there is some significant maintenance that should be done to make sure your bike is both safe and fast for the spring season. So we're gonna walk you through all of the key points that you should check, all the maintenance that you should do before you jump on your bike in the spring to make sure that you are ready to roll. First things first, we are going to start with the wheels because wheels are pretty important on a mountain bike. So the first thing I always recommend is taking a look at your tires and making sure they still have what we call tread life. After you run a mountain bike all season long, you're on and off the brakes, you're skidding and sliding all over the place, you tend down to wear down the little knobs on your tire that help you hold the bike to the ground. Typically, it's pretty easy to tell if the treads on the tire are good or they're pretty worn. You'll start to see cracks, the knobs start to fold off of the bike, but what you want is nice, sharp edges on your tire to make sure you're gonna have optimal traction on the ground. Next up, I think we're gonna wanna, most of us are running tubeless, so we're probably gonna wanna check and make sure we have two tubeless sealant inside the tire, right? And it hasn't turned into a dinosaur creature. Yeah, whether it turns into a <clears throat> solidified ball or just simply dries up, you'll just want to add sealant. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think there's much to check. I mean, yeah, if you, if you have a eight ounces of sealant swirling around in the tire, you don't need any, but typically that's not the case in the spring. Typically you just need to add, you know, four ounces ish, mm -hmm. depending on the tire size. Along with those tires and as Jimmy uh, mentioned, tread life and slashes and whatnot in the tire that may not be an issue yet, but could be also dents and dings in the rim. Those are other things that could turn into a catastrophic issue in, in the first ride. So if you can address that in the spring before you start riding, that's good. The other thing you might find is that sealant and air start to evacuate from the nipple hole in the rim. Sometimes that's indicative of your rim tape. There's no more adhesion or the tape's bad no. or it's got, there's a hole in the tape. So you may, not, may have to retape the rim to prevent that air and, and sealant from leaking into the, the inside of the yeah. rim and out the spoke hole. And then lastly, one thing that I'm pretty terrible at is checking your spoke tension. A lot of the times I'll just have the shop do this because I'm not an expert and you need a special tool to check your spoke tension, but you want to make sure none of these bad boys are too loose because at the end of the day, if your spoke tension is off or it's not even all the way around your wheel, you're more likely to have catastrophic damage to your wheel, right? Because yeah. the spokes are what keep everything in line. That's right. And spoke tension, you know, a quick check as, as Jimmy did and just, you know, feel if things are, are somewhat consistent. That's a good thing to do. The tensiometer or the tool that Jimmy mentioned is the, the best way to determine if your spoke tension is where it should be. The hubs also being part of the wheels, like it's a good thing to check, to, to ch just remove the wheel from the bike with the axle in your hand and give it a spin and, and see what you feel. Like it yeah. feels really rough. That's probably an indication that you've got bearings that are, are going bad or are bad. The other thing to do is a free hub body service. So this is a DT Swiss hub. You can simply remove this end cap and, and pull the free hub body off, which is, this is the part that holds the cassette. And these are the internals. It's the part that, that ratchets, the clickety click part. These are all wear items um, and you know, they can wear quickly or not, depending on the abuse and the grease mm -hmm. and how much they've been serviced. So this is something that, that should be serviced annually, at least. And that's one of the things the bike shop's always gonna do. So if you're not comfortable with that or you're having trouble, definitely check with your local bike shop. I found that free hub bodies aren't always the easiest to remove, though they're supposed to be. So moving on to the drivetrain, right? What should we look for in the drivetrain? And when we say the drivetrain, that is what drives the bike. So your cranks, your chain, your derailleur, your cassette, everything that makes the bike propel forward when you put power on your legs. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to disassemble a lot of these components. Um, you know, it's relatively easy. Uh, most don't require super specialized tools. Uh, the, the cassette does, it's a lock, it, there's a lock ring tool and a chain whip to help you remove that. But disassembly of these, uh, visual inspection and cleaning, and then visually, you know, checking to make sure that the teeth on your cassette and chain ring look normal. And by normal, you know, consistent with what they looked like when they were new. 
Uh, you might find that teeth are chipped or missing, you know, that, that might be a good time to replace the cassette, or at least it will um, allow you to prepare for, you know, a new cassette mid-season. Checking for bent links in the chain, and you can simply, with the drivetrain intact and on the bike, you know, you can, you can spin your cranks in reverse and get a good visual inspection of the cassette, the chain ring, and the chain. But there are chain checkers um, that basically indicate you know, when it's time to replace your chain. It's a good idea to get in a habit of replacing your chain. You sometimes can get two, three, four, five chains per drivetrain. So it's kind of like changing the oil in your car. Yeah. You know, you're just prolonging the life of the drivetrain by replacing the chain often and a chain checker from Park Tools or, or Pedro's mm -hmm. will allow you to measure that and, and determine when it should be changed. And then lastly, I think just running through the drivetrain, right? So shifting gears, making sure that it's shift, up shifting and down shifting properly. Sometimes that can just be tension in the cable. Sometimes it just could be minor tweaks in the derailleur, but you just wanna make sure it's shifting right. And if you don't know how to fix that, uh, there are other videos out there on that, or again, just go to your local bike shop and they'll take care of it and make sure it's shifting top notch. All right, next up, talk to me about suspension. What do I need to do in the spring? Yeah, there's a couple basics we, we recommend annually. Three, three really, uh, fork lower service. That's basically a 50 hour service on the fork. It's changing the oil. You know, the oil is gonna get dirty, much like the oil in your, your vehicle engine. Mm -hmm. um, that gets dirty and breaks down over time. Same with suspension fluids and oils. If that's something that you're not familiar with, that, that might be some work for a bike shop. If you are, it's a pretty simple service. And on the, the rear shock, it's much the same as the front. A basic service and I would say for suspension this is this is more of advanced bike tech right if you're at home and you're a beginner I wouldn't just start taking your suspension apart there's a lot of different chambers and seals their build kit so that is something for me that I leave to the bike shop and then third is uh, we call it a suspension pivot service basically disassembling the suspension pivots they have a tendency to collect um, dirt and grime and also there are usually bearings and bushings in there so you know getting those disassembled and, and having the ability to to visually inspect them and feel them to make sure everything's everything's kosher is good. Yeah, a lot of bikes, I'm guilty of all, all of my pivot bearings are usually completely blown. And you have to understand every time you wash the bike, especially if you're at a bike park and you're using a power washer, which is technically not great, you're forcing dirt and grit into all these cracks, right? And that goes into the water and seeps into the bearings and then it just becomes a, a rusty mess. So something you should do because it, it does change the performance of the bike a ton, right? Absolutely. Having all proper bearings. All right, uh, brakes. What do we need to think about with our brakes? Yeah, brakes, you know, there's a couple of things that we wanna pay close attention to. One is the, the rotors. There's usually a minimum rotor thickness requirement. Sometimes they're stamped on the rotor so it's very simple to uh, measure it with a pair of calipers. Uh, also, just a visual inspection to see if there's any scoring or chips in the rotor. The brake pads, obviously, um, looking at the brake pad and how much material is left. You know, you can compare it to a new, new brake pad, but essentially you're either looking at having brake pad that's still protruding from the aluminum or steel backing or none. If you notice that it's very low and, and starting to almost become flush with that aluminum or steel backing, then that's that's time to yeah. replace the, the sure. brake pad. And then an annual bleed, that's pretty inexpensive if you're paying someone to do it. It's also something that if you're mechanic savvy, that's pretty simple to do. But bleeding yeah. your brakes to get any air that's in there out or to flush dirty dirty fluid out of the system and put new mm. fluid in there. And when you say bleed, these these are hydraulic brakes, right? So they have a hydraulic fluid in here, right? So yeah. just like the oil in your suspension, over time, the more that fluid moves, it kind of degrades and breaks down. So you want to make sure that's fresh. If you're not familiar, you don't have a bleed kit, which is what you'll need to do that, uh, definitely recommend taking it to the shop. Uh, typically, it's easy to tell if you need a bleed because normally you'll have a nice sharp brake. It stops really hard. Uh, once it starts to get smushy, the brake lever pulls into the bar a bit more. You can tell that your brakes aren't performing the way they should. And that's when you'd normally uh, look at getting a bleed first, if not new brake pads or rotors. Last but not least, dropper. Dropper. Right, dropper posts are kind of run of the mill now, and there is some service that should be done on a dropper every year. Right? Yeah, I mean it's really similar to the fork and the shock. You know, you've got basically two components that telescope within each other. So the introduction of dirt and form materials is is something that happens occasionally. You run into the requirement to replace some internal components based on what you're seeing, but yeah, it's pretty pretty common to just disassemble, clean grease reassemble. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I think that that's very important is just a visual check of the entire bike, especially the frame, right? 
Aluminum frames aren't as guilty, but carbon frames tend to crack in places and you don't notice until, until it's catastrophic. So you really just want to run over the whole bike, make sure there's no cracks, nothing that looks out of whack, right? Just yeah. to make sure that, that you're safe and you're not missing anything. Yep. If, if you're going to this extent and it's, it's a service that you're going to do once a year, I would also go to the extent of you know, disassembling the headset, which is where the fork uh, component goes through the, the head tube of the frame. Mm -hmm. There are two bearings in there, one on the upper side, one on the lower side. So disassembling those, checking them, see how they roll. Yeah. They should roll smooth, cleaning them and reassembling. And the same for the bottom bracket, you know, making sure those bearings rotate and roll smoothly without mm -hmm. any notchiness, clean those up and then reassemble your your cranks. I think that pretty much covers it. Obviously a nice spit shine and making her look good. It should be pretty simple. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not once you start to end the, understand the components and, and the visual cues and the things that you're looking for to make sure you're ready to go. If you have any questions, comments, anything that you want to add that we forgot, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you're a fan of the video, we're going to be doing a bunch more of these in different depths of complexity, but again, trying to make complex subjects much simpler for you guys. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support. Keep riding, y'all. Okay, are we good? Yeah, You're good. I'm gonna do this all time. <laughs> this is... <sighs> first things first, let's start with the wheels because all bikes have wheels. <laughs> Ten tensiometer, is that ten ten tensia tensiometer? Ten tensiometer. Yeah. Find one of those on the Google. <laughs>